Hogan identifies four main areas of physical self-care, which you'll see on the screen. Sleep, nutrition, exercise, and body image. In speaking about body image, she defines this as letting go of pressure to achieve a perfect body, finding what you like about your body, taking care of your appearance. You matter to yourself and to others. We won't spend a lot more time on this area of self-care since it is so well known. Let's just keep it as a priority. Of the women we study, Saints Gertrude and St. Elizabeth were both well known for their care of the poor and the sick. They knew and placed a high priority on care and well-being of the physical needs of others. Strengthening our physical body strengthens our foundation, the vessel, our pot, from which everything can grow. Terry will lead you through the next step of the project now, which has to do with our mind. The soil represents our mind. You'll find your bag of soil in your kit. And we'll take about half of that and pour it into the pot. Maybe a little bit more. And then you're going to take your plant and if you roll that around to loosen it, and then you'll gently take it out and place it into there, into the pot, and then put the rest of the dirt on top of it. And then you'll tamp it down just slightly to secure it, and you'll want to get that all the way around evenly. Um, later on, if you've got some extra space at the top of your pot, you may want to get some decorative stone or pebbles, something that would be porous that will decorate it to match your decor. And then just secure that in there. Okay. Scripture gives us some clear direction on feeding the mind. Romans 12.2 tells us, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not wage war according to our human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. Philippians 4:8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Our mind and mental health are extremely important in caring for ourselves and in our overall thoughts and actions. Our thoughts actually really direct who we are, both internally and externally. Here's a quote from Caroline Leaf, who's a Christian neuroscientist. She says, thoughts are real physical things that occupy mental real estate. Moment by moment, every day, you are changing the structure of your brain through your thinking. When we hope, it is an activity of the mind that changes the structure of our brain in a positive and normal direction. The more we focus on something, the more it controls us. Knowing this, the enemy works overtime, blinding our minds, because he understands that if he can keep our minds in the dark, we will never be able to see the light of the gospel. And those thoughts come from an article in uh, Walking with Purpose, which is a Catholic women's Bible study. They also say to saturate your mind with scripture. Read it before you go to bed. Read it when you wake up. And remember this, we become what we behold. Pay attention to your negative thoughts. Are they coming from God or the enemy? Write them down to see if you can get to their root. Then go and pluck them out. And that's by Lord felt of walking with purpose. So mental well-being is just as important as physical well-being, even though it's not always as evident or obvious. Addressing mental health also helps with physical health and spiritual health. It helps you develop mental resilience as a buffer against stress 
for the present and the future. Coping gives four ways to invest in your mental well-being. She says first to silence your inner critic. Identify the voice and recognize the lies so that you can reframe your thoughts. Be mindful of social media. Don't compare yourself to other people on social media. Make time for leisure. Make sure that you really commit time and intentional engagement. Believe in yourself. Remember your worth and develop confidence. Ed Broom of Catholic Exchange writes that there are five steps to actually giving your mind to Christ. He says, watch what goes in, find good solid reading, the Bible, the lives of the saints, and other faith-based articles and books. Develop and sustain positive friendships and conversations, receive the Eucharist, and pray the Psalms. Emotions are really different than thoughts, but they're often hard to separate. We need to make sure our emotions don't control us. It's just too stressful. It's important to recognize and manage your emotions as they can and do influence our thoughts. In terms of some of the women we studied, we might consider Dolores Hope, who was famous and wealthy, at least in our eyes. However, her life had some challenges. These included the stressors of show business lifestyle and infidelity in her marriage. Yet Dolores had a great deal of fortitude and persistence and a solid sense of her identity, especially within the faith. I think that she was a woman who had her thoughts aligned to what was true. We also studied Anna the prophetess who met the baby Jesus in the temple. Anna seemed to physically to, I'm sorry, Anna seemed to mystically realize that the baby was the hoped for Messiah. Anna was one who knew and spoke the truth. Her thoughts were aligned. So the soil fills the vessel, provides the plant a place to grow. So too our mental health, our minds, especially our thoughts, and also our emotions, provide us with a base and nutrients to grow and to develop in all areas of life. Terry will show us the next step of the process, and we're going to focus on nourishing the spirit, the water. Our spirit, the water represents our spirit. Now, your plant's not going to need a ton of water. Um, the care instructions are in your packets for further care, and you just want to put enough water in there to dampen it. These are succulents. They won't need water very often. Again, there's many scriptures related to the spirit, and I'm just going to read a couple of those. From Proverbs 17:22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. And John 15:1 to 5 and 26 to 27, I am the true vine, and the Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. An article from the devotional Word Among Us talks about our spiritual life and says that our spiritual life informs our physical, mental, emotional, and relational life. It guides how we approach things and people, how we care for ourselves, and it keeps us motivated when things get tough. Our spiritual health is dependent on many systems running well. 
our connection with Jesus, our attention to our inner life, and our efforts at loving one another as Jesus loves us. If we neglect any one of these errors, areas, we will find ourselves being shaped more by this world than by the Holy Spirit. But if all three of these areas are in good working order, we'll find ourselves becoming more like Jesus every day. Cultivating a strong prayer life is a critical part of self-care. Research supports prayer and other spiritual practices as being beneficial, beneficial to our overall well-being. They can lower stress and anxiety, they can increase our immune system, they can help us have better concentration and be calmer. The more we see and believe in God's love for us through prayer, the more we'll be able to love ourselves as we are and to treat others with love and care. Spiritual self-care is unique to each person. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does require a commitment. A result of prayer is that it gently, subtly, and tenderly brings about change, if not in our world, in us, and how we perceive that world. The act of praying can work wonders on our attitude, our mind, and our state of heart. It can truly help bring about peace. A man named Dr. Andrew Newberg of Philadelphia's Thomas and Thomas Jefferson Hospital studied the impact of prayer on the human body. He told NBC News that prayer has a distinct and mysterious ability to change us. There are some practical strategies related to spirituality. Some of these have already been mentioned in the above articles that were referenced. Daily devotionals with scripture, specific time and place for daily prayer, spiritual podcasts or radio programs, spiritual books, Bible study group or spiritual book club, and participation in the sacraments. In another article from Walking with Purpose, Lisa states, a risk we all run when we love others lavishly is neglecting to take care of ourselves. What begins as a passion of the heart, a pure desire to help, can actually place us in a dangerous position where we find it hard to stay faithful. When we coast on the fumes of a life that lacks spiritual discipline, we can find that we begin to blend in and are no longer offering hope at a better way. We're just like everyone else, no different. In her article, she relates a little story that I would like to share. It's really pretty humorous. She said, years ago, I was driving home from my parents' house with my daughter. Barreling down the highway at 70 miles an hour, we noticed smoke billowing from the hood. Just in time, I pulled over as our engine blew up. We couldn't believe it. The car had shown no signs of any trouble up to this point. Imagine my mortification when I realized that the engine had blown up simply because I had failed to ever change the oil. I guess I just got busy with life and forgot. I didn't take how seriously it was essential to follow the basic directions of taking care of the car. In the same way, we can be lax about the importance of spiritual discipline. We can coast through life much as I was in my car, thinking that things were done in the past and they were going to keep us going indefinitely. We can have heart and passion and still lose everything if we ignore these practices. 